Good afternoon, Patriots. Constitution Vet here. And today, we get started in one of our series. This series focuses on the Constitution of the United States. That's right. Throughout this series, you and I will be breaking this down piece by piece. Now, don't worry. We're not going to read this word for word every single page. No, no. What we will do is highlight key components that make up our Constitution. And we're going to analyze them together using three steps. Number one, we're going to look at what it actually says. Number two, we're going to analyze the historical context behind what's actually said. And finally, you're going to learn how to apply this to your modern day-to-day -day life. So without any further ado, let's get started. So as you can tell, I have this lovely rendition of the Constitution. This was actually gifted to me by one of my former students. Now, this is a very thick book. This is not just the Constitution, mind you. This is also a compilation of selected writings created by our founding fathers. We're not going to be looking into that today. Instead, we're going to dive into the most important component of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights the first 10 amendments of the Constitution. Today, we'll be analyzing, in my opinion, the most important right that you have, the Second Amendment. So let's get started. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The major debate on this is understanding this single word, militia. What does it mean? I never heard this debate until I got out of the Air Force and I started going to college. There's two sides to this. One side argues that this is meant for a security force, police force, or the military, hence the word militia. And to be fair, I get that. Most people think of the word militia, they think of military. The other side argues, no, 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 the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So then the question is, well, which one is it? Is it militia or is it the people? That's our goal today, is to figure out what the word militia actually means. Is there a difference? Or are they the same? Let's find out. So the sources I'll be using for today's video are three. And I'm going to show you images of these sources. The links to them, by the way, are down in the description. First source is a book written by David McCullough entitled John Adams. The second source for today is also written by David McCullough. And this one is entitled 1776. Both are phenomenal pieces of work. And they both analyze the American Revolution from different perspectives. This one in particular is really good because it shows you the perspective of King George and Washington. The previous reading is the perspective of John Adams. Both of these are meant to be read together. After you're done reading these, I highly encourage y'all to check out a mini-series that was made by HBO entitled John Adams. This came out a good while ago. HBO tends to hire really good historians. And this mini-series focuses on the American Revolution during and after from the perspective of John Adams. Again, very well made, very historically accurate, highly encourage it. So again, most people would think of the word militia as someone who is in the military, police force, security force, things like that. However, the reality is very different. Help illustrate this, I have a quick video clip from the miniseries, John Adams.
such name has happened. They sent a regiment to seize our powder and arms at Concord. Hundreds of our militia turned out. The British got nothing. Well, where are they now? Are they close by? We are chasing the bastards back to Boston, and we'll keep them there. Uh, Yo, yeah, move! Yeah. During this time, the actual military was called the Continental Army. These were the actual soldiers, but uniforms who were paid either by Congress or by Washington himself. That was the military. Not this. What we see here are average, everyday people, farmers, Fishermen, shopkeepers, men, women, children. They're not wearing uniforms. Some of them are dead, as well as some of the British. Now, this is to show, you know, what this may have looked like back then. Obviously, it's not a primary source. This is a secondary source. But this show does a really good job at being you know, as accurate as possible. But as John Adams walks up here, he's seeing the aftermath of this battle. Of course, he's wondering what the hell happened. These are British soldiers. These are the British military. Well, who killed them? It wasn't the Continental Army. It was the militia. The people. These people coming down this road here. Men, older men, even boys, and sometimes women. This is a militia. It's the people, the citizens. The average person who has a firearm in their house who can grab it at any moment's notice and fight back against tyranny. In this instance, it was the British. They were hoping to seize ammunition, but the militia fought back and defeated them. This showed that the people could be as much of a force as the actual military. Let's go back. To what the Constitution actually says. A well regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Militia and people are the same thing. So, a fundamental fact that a lot of people don't understand. If you are an American citizen, Guess what? You're a militia. That might ruffle some feathers. I get it. And to be fair, you don't have to own a firearm to be an American citizen. And it's okay if you don't want to. You don't have to like it. You don't have to have one. Totally your call. Your choice. However, if you come across people that use the argument that the Second Amendment was for the military or some police force, Nope. The term militia means the people. The right for you to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Further debates can come from the phrase a well-regulated. Okay, what does that mean? Some states have taken it as to say, oh, okay, well-regulated, we have the right to issue our own regulations on guns as we see fit. However, the other side looks at that and argues, no, the word regulated means everyone should be able to have a firearm. Everyone must have a firearm. That's how the other side sees it. The last part, though, 
I would say is the most important part where it says shall not be infringed. So in future videos, we might delve into this deeper, but today my main goal was to show you what the second amendment actually says, what the word militia really means, now it's applied to today. So whether you like it or not, if you're an American citizen, you are a militia. You have every right to be a militia. You don't even have to be part of an organized group. If you have a firearm in your home, you're a militia. If you do have a firearm or if you wish to purchase a firearm, I highly encourage you to take some type of training course to make sure you use it safely and effectively. But just like cars, a firearm is a tool. This tool can cause horrific tragedy, as we have seen. However, it can also save lives. And in this context, it provides the last line of defense against tyranny. Now, before we go, if you can, please make sure to like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Never surrender, never submit. This is Constitution Vet, signing out.